It's time to whip out this bad boy. Now for reference, this is an 11 by 15 inches. So here is the watercolor paper that I normally use, which is nine by 12. And then here is the sketchbook that I've been using for the last few months. So as you can see, there is quite the size difference between this whole thing. It barely even fits in frame. So we'll see how this painting goes today. All right, so here's what I'm thinking. Um, so kind of my original idea was to use a lot of washi tape here. Um, so I'm still kind of gonna stick to that idea. Um, I started off doing pink diamond and then over here I was doing some landscapes, but I decided to go back to this pink diamond idea. Um, so this is kind of the idea minus rose and pearl here. So I'm going to have pink diamond in the background and then I'm going to do the background out of um, this washi tape which I'm going to then cut out some of the pieces. So I'm going to do the whole background like that which is going to be on this big paper and then on a separate sheet of paper, uh, this one over here, I'm going to do pink diamond and then I'm going to cut her out of this one and then paste it on top of this one. Does that make any sense? I don't know. We'll see how that works out. So what I'm doing now is starting off with the portrait. Um, so I took the sketch from my sketchbook and then transferred it over to a piece of a tracing paper, as you can see me doing right now. So after I transferred it, transferred it I made a couple of little minor adjustments um, to kind of just make it flow better. And then I took that piece of transfer paper or um, tracing paper and then I put it over to the new sheet of watercolor paper and then began painting my portrait right now. So initially I used a Prismacolor Call Erase Pencil to do all of the sketching and all of the kind of finalizing and transferring over to the final watercolor paper. So I decided to use one of these colored pencils instead of a pencil because pencils really tend to smudge and I didn't want that and I didn't want any harsh lines to be in the end um, because originally I did want to kind of have a lineless look as you can see right now there are no lines. Now, as for the colors, I really decided to do a lot of pinks, and I kind of did a big wash of pink over everything um, to get everything kind of in unison and kind of feeling as a one in the colors. Hey again, I guess. So here's what I have so far. I'm honestly kind of feeling a little bit stuck. Um, I feel like her face and her hair is just all blending in together a little bit too much. Um, and I initially wanted to have the whole thing kind of not be lined and then maybe add some lines in the end or something. But since I am so stuck, I might just go in and line the eyes and some of the facial features. and line the facial features I did. So upon kind of digging through all of my art supplies and looking for a micron pen, which I was originally going to use to line the drawing, I stumbled upon um, some more various colors of these Prismacolor Collier's pencils. 
and um, I thought it would be an interesting idea to kind of line it with a color instead of a more darker uh, brown or black pen and ink. So in the end, I really thought this idea um, worked out well and in favor with the painting. It added a little bit more definition to her face, the facial features, the eyes, you know, the different shapes of the hair and everything, but it didn't overpower the painting like uh, maybe a pen and ink would. So I think really in the future, I might stick to this, maybe get more colors, a uh, color variety of these Prismacolor pencils so I can use them for lining. And as you can see in the hair, it really added a lot more definition and I think it, that's really what the painting needed at this point in time. And so another reason I think I was kind of stuck with the painting, I didn't really know what to do, the face was blending in the hair and everything, is because if you look up Pink Diamond, her colors are so kind of in one tone, there's not much variation. That it's really hard to get a difference between the clothes, the hair, and the skin. So what I think in the end I kind of did is I made the hair a little bit more purple based. You can definitely see that right now. And then the skin is kind of in that medium area um, between purple and red. So I used a lot of alizarin crimson. Actually my whole tube of paint is pretty much gone of that color. And then for the clothes, I made them a lot more darker and a lot more darker purple to kind of um, make it a little bit different in the tones um, throughout her whole entire character. So what I'm doing here is I'm revisiting the background again. So while the paint is drying on the actual painting, I'm going to start working on the background. So what I had in mind and that I already kind of did a little practice of is here in my sketchbook. If you can see right here, I used this washi tape. So I put down a couple layers of it. And I am going to put down and then cut out some of the pieces so it looks like this weird intricate background like it was in the show. Um, it's kind of like a screenshot, I guess, from the show um, with a design in the background. So we'll see how that goes. If you can see in my practice, a lot of times I accidentally ripped up the actual paper. So um, yeah, so while I wait for this to dry, I, oh, I put that on the wet forget it. So while I'm waiting for this painting to dry, I'm going to start working on the background with this washi tape I have here. And here is what I think is my favorite part of the whole painting, the crystal, uh, her gem. So what I did for this is I looked up a reference of an actual pink diamond or just diamonds in general to kind of see the shape, especially when they're cut and nice and polished. You can definitely see a lot of different shards and angles and weird things like that. So that's kind of what I tried to capture looking somewhat like an actual diamond but yet also still looking like the stone that she has um so i still kind of made it the same shape and looking like hers but also somewhat realistic in a sense so after i did all the little details i waited for that to dry and then on top of it i put a little wash of color so all the way on the left i did the lightest middle and then dark over on the right to kind of blend in everything together and then fill in kind of the blank spaces and i was going to add some white gel pen to it to kind of pop some things out kind of highlights and stuff like you see in actual diamonds but i decided not to do that in the end because i really did like how it turned out
Alrighty, so here is what I have for my painting and right now I think I'm a little bit stuck. I'm not too sure what to do and at the same time I don't want to overwork it um, and just put too much painting. So I think I'm going to stop for now. Um, what I'm going to do is cut her out of this painting or of this paper and then I'm going to keep working on the background that I have here. So I started working on this but I didn't want to get too far until I actually cut her out of here and then so I can see exactly what shape she's going to make so where I have to put the background of this washi tape. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead, cut her out, and then continue working on this background. I cut her out and here's what I have. So it actually did not even take me all that long and it wasn't all that hard to um, cut it out or anything. And I tried to put a little bit more detail in the hair here at the bottom, but otherwise it was pretty straightforward lines and I also trimmed down um, the edges to make them a little bit clean and to fit into the border of the background. And then hopefully it'll be all done because I'm sure you don't want to watch me cutting out little pieces of washi tape for hours. Alrighty, so I swear this is the last thing I'm going to show you. I want to show you a little comparison between the last few years of my diamond paintings. So here is yellow diamond um, and in the corner it says 2015. But that's definitely wrong because yellow diamond didn't make her appearance until 2016. So this is from 2016 with watercolors. And then a year later, in January 2017, I did Blue Diamond with these weird pimples in the background. Don't ask. Um, and now I have Pink Diamond. So whoever left in the comments a comment recommending that I paint Pink Diamond, thank you so much. Um, because now it added to kind of my collection of diamond paintings. And hopefully next year around this time, we'll see White Diamond. Well, anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you later. Stick around and subscribe for more if you're interested. And toodles!